Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today we're going to talk about the Nevada caucus results. Woo -woo! We are off to the races, baby. It is getting cracking up in the 2020 U.S. presidential primary race. We are seeing some results back. We are seeing the future of America being decided. We are seeing some real shape start to take place in the U.S. presidential primary race. All right, let's talk about these numbers. What the heck? Wow. Okay. All right. Nevada, they had... Um, they had 36 delegates up for, uh, 36 delegates, okay? And we have it all back. We, we know 36 delegates were up for grabs. And Monday night, we knew, right? So we didn't know Saturday night. We didn't know Sunday night. We didn't know, and we did know Monday night. Three days to get, like, come on, like three nights where you're looking for the results and you get it on night three. Like, nothing in America, you know, works like this anymore. Like, it feels like we're, you know, just sitting in the middle of, like, um, come on, man. Is this a Jane Austen novel? Like, are we getting these results by letter? What the heck is going on? Right? It is a serious, serious, serious problem. Let's just talk about the numbers, though. All right. Here we go. Only three people got uh, got delegates. Uh, Bernie Sanders won Nevada. He got 24. He got 24 delegates. Okay. He got twice as many delegates as the two other people who got delegates combined, right? Bernie Sanders just politically curb stomped every candidate in uh, in the, in Nevada. It was ugly. It it just got ooh, it was like oof. Like Bernie threw down. He threw down in Nevada, right? And he is he is like off to the races. He is just like. Well, I don't want to say Bernie's running because that could be a little dangerous for Bernie. <laughs> you don't want Bernie Sanders running, not literally. He's asked to run very figuratively, okay? All right. But Bernie is off to the races figuratively, right? Okay. Because you quite literally to me to make sure he doesn't run too, much, too many places. All right. Here we go. Uh, all right. 24 delegates for Bernie Sanders. Uh, who else got delegates? Joe Biden. What? Joe Biden coming up like, uh, you know, sweeping around with the slingshot. Coming out, you know, um, and uh, and surprising a lot of people and getting nine delegates. Nine delegates. Who else is in there? Pete Buttigieg. Three delegates. Three delegates. Okay? All right. So let's just talk about Nevada and then let's talk about the whole race delegate rate delegate count race-wise, okay? This is really, 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 really fascinating. All right, so this is big. Uh, Bern, you know, like, this, Bernie has got some serious, serious, serious momentum. It really looks like Bernie is is going the distance. He is the true contender, um, and he really, it looks like he's going the distance. This absolutely terrifies me. I have no idea how this is happening. This does not make any sense in any real significant way. Okay, I just, I can't understand how this is happening, okay? This, Bernie's run for president is so unhinged from any type of practical thought or any type of rational thought, right? Am I the only one who understands this? If you are voting for Bernie, okay, you are signing up for an 87-year-old president. What? An 87 year year old president okay the earth is melting and you're saying you know the earth is melting we got global health crises we got global climate crisis global health crisis i think we got a global love crisis right we got just tons of in insane problems right now and we're saying okay we know the best person in america to deal with this is an 87 year old person what what Right now, why am I saying you would be signing up for an 87-year-old president? Well, Bernie has never promised to run for one term, and he and he can't. He he absolutely cannot. He can't even do it. I think he would like to, but he can't. He knows the second he says I'm only going to run for one term, people are going to count him out, and well, they would because it, it would be admitting I can't go the distance. Right? That he can't do it. Right? So that means you know he's going to be like every other president on the planet, try to get as much power as he can for as long as he can. But hey, that that formula has never changed, right? 
So you, so you, you sign up for Bernie, you're signing up for an 87-year-old president. Like, while the earth melts and, and, and you know, plagues whip, through, whip across the world, you, you want an 87-year-old person in charge of America. Like, this is not, like, listen, I'm all for uh, elderly people working, right? But we have a retirement age for a reason, okay? When you are 87 years old, you are 21 years, two decades past the age of retirement, right? Now, that means that Bernie absolutely fails and proves that the that the uh, that the retirement age is there for a really good reason, and that he should have never been uh, voted in as president anyway. People should have just used logic and not voted for him. There should be no law that they should ever stop anybody from running for president as old as they want to. Right? This has got to be left to logic. Okay? But that logic is all you need. Logic logic is all you need to understand that when the Earth is melting and plagues are whipping across the globe. You don't need an 87-year-old person two decades past the age of retirement um, in charge. That doesn't make any sense. It just doesn't. Like, this age issue, the 2020 U.S. presidential primary race, it ain't about climate. It ain't about justice reform. It ain't about immigration. It's about age. It's about age. And the real question now is, does the retirement age matter, right? And I'm telling you, no matter what happens with Bernie, if he's elected with president, it's catastrophic, okay? If he fails and he is too old to do the job, that's not good, right? Nobody wants to see that. I don't want to see Bernie fail as a president. No way. You know, I'm not hoping for that, right? If he succeeds, that could be even worse. As soon as the Republicans get the presidency back, they're going to they're gonna go, Guess what? We had an 87-year-old president. Retirement age is now not 66. It's 86. And guess who you got to thank for it? Bernie Sanders. Welcome to America, cyberpunk. Bam. Done. Bernie is terrifying. Bernie is terrifying. He is terrifying. Like they, uh, I'm telling you, man. Whoo! I do not understand how we are looking at a Bernie Sanders presidency it, it like the possibility of that well shoot that that even that even assumes he even has a prayer of beating Trump which I don't think he does but the idea that there are millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of Democrats who are ready to sign up for an 87 year old president while while the earth melts and plagues whip across the earth I don't know that that doesn't make a lot of sense to me it just like what like <laughs> All right, but here we are. Here we are. Okay. All right. Let's talk about Joe Biden. All right. Now, first of all, Joe Biden was was evaporating like a shallow pool under the hot sun. It was. It was getting. It was not looking pretty. It was very very frightening actually. All right. Uh, this is really good for his campaign. Uh, he 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 had six delegates previously. He now has, and he got nine here in Nevada, okay? So he got nine nine delegates, and that is huge. Huge, right? And that's really good for Joe, but not good enough. Not good enough. Bernie is stomping on him. Stomping on him. All right, let's talk about Pete Buttigieg. Pete Buttigieg is the little engine that could. That dude is... One of the biggest things, uh, I'm a huge fan of Grace Randolph. If, uh, Grace Randolph is the best movie uh, critic on the planet. If you don't watch her, check her out. Treat yourself. Um, she is really good. And she was just talking this weekend about the box office for uh, Birds of Prey. Uh, that's that's a movie that should have been called Harley Quinn, right? And that should have been all Harley Quinn all the time through the whole movie. And should have been good, but it wasn't. And it lost... Like, Harley Quinn should have done a billion dollars as a layup. It's struggling to make, like, two or three hundred million, right? It, like, it's bad, okay? Now, the problem with Birds of Prey was the expectations were very high on that film. And it's not even the numbers. It's that the expectations were high, and it's failing to meet expectations. And that's what Pete is doing. Pete is zooming past the expectations. Uh, you know, come on, this guy's a small-town mayor. Like, you know, like nobody assumed anything from him, but he's crushing it. He's really, he's taking the nitro boosts that are being handed to him daily 
by the media, and he and he's putting them in his 10-second uh, car, and he is zooming away in this race. He's doing fantastic. Pete Buttigieg crushed it in Nevada, got some delegates, continues to tell that you know that exciting, compelling, interesting Pete Buttigieg story. He he is he is building a narrative. He is giving people something to talk about. Okay. All right, sad face, sad face, sad face. Let's talk about Amy Klobuchar. Let's talk about Elizabeth Warren. Let's talk about the possibility of a 2020 female president starting to disappear, starting to turn to ash exactly like uh, Black Panther turned to ash at the end of Avengers Endgame, right? Exactly like Spider-Man turned to ash at the end of uh, Avengers Endgame. This is not good. Uh, I'm a huge Amy Klobuchar fan uh, of the of the sufficient six, the six people who are left. Uh, Amy Klobuchar is my favorite, and she was like, I was, you know, just trying to wrap my brain around what it would look like to, to vote for somebody other than Andrew Yang, because I want my vote to matter. I want to have some impact in this world. I don't want to just, uh, I want to, I want to use my my vote the very best way I can, and I don't think even Andrew Yang wants people, you know, voting for him at this point. That I don't, I definitely, I don't think there's any evidence that Andrew Yang wants any Democrat to vote for him in the race that he literally just quit. Right? There's no evidence for that. So if there is, point me to it. That's what the comments are for. Please, I, I, I will gladly stand corrected. All right. So, um, so here's the thing. Uh, we, boy, oh boy. Uh, so yeah, so um, Amy and Elizabeth, they are carrying the be- the banner of a female pre- of the first female president in 2020. Um, and you know, and uh, Kamala's out, and Gillibrand is out, and Marianne Williamson is out. Now she may come back astrally. She may be able to figure out a way to run in the, on the astral plane. But right now, it's hard to get delegates in the astral plane. So. We here we are here we are, right? And uh, and I will say, I, um, I have a I have a <laughs> I have a beautiful daughter that I love in um, in college, and she has really you know kind of really opened my eyes to the importance of um, representation for all people, and I understand how important a female president is, and I know there's some people weeping as they see. Uh, Amy Klobuchar and Elizabeth Warren goose egg in Nevada is not good. All right, let's hit the final numbers. All right, here's where we are overall. This is where this is this is Ohio, New Hampshire, and Nevada all together. Let's talk about it. Bernie Sanders, 45 delegates. Who's in second? Pete Buttigieg. He's got 25 delegates. Okay. Then you got B- Biden. Nevada was huge for him. He now has 15 delegates. Guess what? Biden went from being a very went from being a balloon that looked like it was about to be popped to having more to having exactly the same number of delegates as Amy Klobuchar and Elizabeth Warren combined. Combined. They are in trouble. Uh, Amy and Elizabeth that did not bode well. That did not bode well. So this this race is shaping up, and it looks like it looks like the uh, the outcome of this 2020 U.S. presidential primary uh, primary race, and the the candidate's going to be served up to Donald Trump is going to be his absolute just. It's going to be a gift to him. It's going to look like it's, it looks like it's going right now. It really looks like it's going to be Bernie Sanders, right? And Donald Trump's just got to be sitting, clapping his hands, and just with a massive smile on his face because Bernie Sanders is the only Bernie Sanders is is a candidate that comes with pull tabs for defeat multiples multiples right so you got, you know what are the pull tabs to defeat that come on candidate Bernie Sanders well socialism pull here to defeat uh, uh, Bernie Sanders uh, you know San Bernie 20 Bernie October 2019 what if there's a Bernie August 2020. That's a pull tab. You're done. That's it. All right. That, you know that, that's pull here to defeat. Like I'm telling you, I I have never seen anything like this in my life. This is truly incredible. 
I cannot believe the impracticality of the of of the Democrats voting for Bernie. He is not a great candidate on a lot of fronts. He is just he's got two incredibly serious issues as a candidate. Um, you know, and and I just I am I am shocked and amazed uh, at what's happening here. So. All that's my opinion. I'd love to hear your opinion on the topic. Let me know. Were you shocked with these outcomes? Uh, let me know in the comments below. Please consider liking and subscribing. And have a wonderful, wonderful millennium.